Hello and welcome. Well, we're here today to share 10 ways partners can provide breastfeeding support. Yep, you heard me right. This is paternal breastfeeding support information, not for mums, but for dads and for partners, just to show how they can make a difference. So if you're a father or a partner expecting a newborn and the mother is planning to breastfeed and you're just wondering, what can I do to help? Then this chat is definitely for you. To help share her expert information and advice, we welcome our special guest, Julia Day. Now, Julia is an international board certified lactation consultant and pediatric registered nurse with more than 15 years experience in neonatal and pediatric intensive care units. Thank you for joining us today. How are you? Oh, thank you for having me. It's lovely to be here. Yes, and we're very excited to be chatting to you. And naturally, you know, one would think that breastfeeding is a topic that is isolated to mothers and with good reason. However, you know, this isn't necessarily the case. And just because a father or a partner isn't physically able to breastfeed the baby from the breast doesn't mean that they can't still be a significant part of the daily feeding routine. In fact, it's quite the opposite and they are and they can be an integral part of the, of the routine. So I'd just love to know initially, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so um, the partners provide a really, really big um, source of support for the mums and um, it can be um, quite mentally and emotionally draining breastfeeding at times and so it's really important to have the support of um, your support people around you, so whether that be dad or um, another support person with you. Um, and support people can take lots of different forms um, in terms of it might be parents that might be helping as well or friends, um, but if we're just talking at that really close-knit um, support, um, research does tell us that it makes a huge difference to um, the longevity of the breastfeeding as well. Yes, and so how long, you, you've been in the industry now for quite some time, it's over 15 years, isn't it? Yes, no. yeah, actually, actually, probably going on 17 now, I might need to update my website. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so I mean, so in your 17 years experience, which is quite a significant amount of time, I mean, during yeah. that time, what are some of the most common concerns and or I guess, misunderstandings that men and partners have just generally about breastfeeding? Yeah, so I think the biggest one, um, and it probably comes from mums and the support people, is that um, it's the only way, feeding is the only way they can bond with the baby, especially in that newborn phase when I guess the dads sort of, you know, they can't play with them or they can't run around outside and do all those things, you know, um, in that newborn phase, they're really just feeding and sleeping. And so I guess a common misconception is that um, <laughs> if the dad's not helping with the feeding by giving a bottle, then they're not actually bonding with the baby but um, there's so many other ways that the the dads or the support people can bond with the baby um, you know whether it's massaging or cuddles or changing the nappies dads always love that one absolutely <laughs> <the> wee nappies. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah there's lots of other ways so and I understand one of the biggest reasons why a lot of women give up on breastfeeding is due to the lack of support from their partner. Um, there's been a lot of studies um, over the years about this as well. Is there anything that you can maybe just expand just generally on this point at all? Yeah, I think breastfeeding certainly happens um, a lot more easily if um, mums have that support. And so it might just be things like, you know, in the early days where there's lots of visitors um, coming to see you, especially in that first six weeks, you know, just um, the partner limiting things like that, um, you know, and just getting some food if she's feeding, a glass of water, just trying to trying to help with those those sorts of tasks. Um, so that you know the feeding which does take a lot of time you know a newborn will could feed sort of eight to twelve times in 24 hours so mm -hmm. you know if they're feeding for an hour at a time it can be quite time consuming so just trying to lighten that load. So in your opinion then when, how important is it for mums to receive support from their partners while breastfeeding then? Oh incredibly important I think that um, yeah it's probably the most important part yeah. And in saying that, I, I guess so mums really need the support to extend just the, the breastfeeding period for as long as possible as well, that we don't necessarily just want this to be just a newborn phase as well. So as long as yes. the, 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 the child is able to be able to breastfeed, I guess, with the support to be able to give the mother the, the opportunity to do so, would you say? 
Yeah, absolutely. And so the World Health Organization recommends exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life. So that's no other food or fluids sort of for that six months and then up to, well, actually they say two years, but it can extend beyond that. So yeah, it can be quite a long time that that support um, is required from, um, from your support person. Yeah. So, okay, here's a question for you. I mean, how could you best describe, I guess, the physical challenges that a mother goes through when breastfeeding to someone who hasn't ever experienced it like a father? Yeah. So I guess probably one of the main things that mums find when they first breastfeed, if they haven't before, is um, nipple pain. You always hear about, um, you know, I guess breastfeeding seems like well, I guess it is a natural process, but it is a learned skill as well. So um, it's not uncommon for mums to have what we call nipple tenderness for the first seven to 10 days. And that can be quite confronting, uh, especially for the partner who's seen um, if their um, their mother of their child is in pain. Um, and so there's that nipple tenderness for the first seven to 10 days, and then it does peak around day three to six. So I guess just being aware of what is normal. So I'd encourage partners to attend like an antenatal class or um, just educating themselves on how breastfeeding works and what's normal and what's not. And then they can actually help the mum if they see that things are going off track um, and can assist them with getting help. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Well, we've got lots to cover in this chat today. Um, and a lot of it is a continuation of what you were just talking about. So before we do that, right. I just wanted to acknowledge that we had published your article and the title is how can you help your partner while breastfeeding? Now for someone who hasn't read the article yet, can you please just tell us what it's about? And, and of course, what inspired you to write it? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, it's an article that um, I wrote with um, Ellen from Kate and Shay. Um, and basically it's around um, the 10 things that you can do to help your partner um, positively adjust to breastfeeding. And so we just go through those 10 steps um, of just describing ways that um, might make it a bit easier um, on your partner and show that ex extra support um, and just sort of a step-by-step -step article really. Awesome. So as you just mentioned, the article lists 10 things a partner can do to help show their support at the start and right throughout the breastfeeding journey. So I'd love to yeah. be able to go through some of those with you now. Would that be okay? Fantastic. Okay, wonderful. So to begin with, feeding is one of the many tasks involved with, with taking care of a newborn. Now, what are some of the other ways um, a partner can bond and interact with a baby? Yeah, so um, lots of different ways. So bathing is a big one. Um, often lots of mums will um, wait till dad or their partner comes home from work and um, do the bathing together at night. Um, changing the nappy and massaging is a really lovely way of bonding as well. Um, and just cuddling and playing and interacting with the baby as well. So there's lots of different ways you can bond without, um, you know, being focused on that feeding side of things. Definitely. There are so many tasks that open up the opportunity, you know, for partners to bond. Um, so, yeah. you know, after the breastfeeding, they can either burp the baby, they can change the nappy, bath, um, and of course, change the baby into their clothes and they can dress them as well, which is always great. And of course, lay the yeah. baby on their bare chest. We sort of read this quite a lot um, to have that skin to skin contact. As you mentioned before, they can massage the baby uh, and of course, cuddles and playing, interacting with the newborn as well. Now, how about the breastfeeding cycles? Um, is it important for them to understand how often the baby needs to be fed? Yes, I think it's really important, um, as I sort of mentioned before, about attending sort of an antenatal class so, so they know what's normal. Um, quite often we find, especially in the hospital setting, is that uh, the expectation is a bit different to what the reality is when you have a new baby. And so um, just being aware that babies do feed sort of eight to 12 times in that first, um, in that first sort of six weeks, um, especially. And um, Often it can be a bit of a shock to the system if um, people are sort of expecting this this baby to, um, you know, feed less often. So, yeah, it, it does take up a lot of time. And, um, yeah, yeah, but those, those feeds cut down really quickly. And um, before you know it, they're on two feeds a day and um, you're away. So, <laughs> yeah, as you just said, you know, like it is 
in that initial period, very time consuming. So any of the tasks that um, the partner can take away from the mother is a great opportunity to bond more with the baby whilst also providing that free time for the mum until the next feed. So definitely it is a busy time in that first six to eight week period. But I'd love to know also how can um, partners encourage the mother while breastfeeding? Yeah, so I think um, just supporting her, listening to her, um, asking what she needs um, and always, um, you know, not feeling afraid to ask for professional help if, if they're struggling and just being there for her, you know, answering the door, um, limiting visitors if you're needing to and just just really being involved. Yes. And, and what are some of the most common concerns a mother may have about her milk supply and how can a partner help here? Yeah, so a lot of mums um, feel like they don't have enough milk and um, the reality is that it's sort of around 4% of the population won't produce a full milk supply. So um, I guess just reassurance and again that goes back to their education. So just being aware of what the normal is um, and you know um, helping with, they can help with things like positioning. So if for example, you know, the baby's not latching on well on one side, you know, if the partner's been to classes, he can say, well, how about we try this side and we could try a different hold. It's just that outside perspective sometimes. As well. And, and talking about making um, the mother feel comfortable, um, of course, we hear about the breastfeeding station as well, <laughs> where the mother is going to be sitting. So, you know, what items um, does a, a breastfeeding mum need at arm's reach in that breastfeeding station that the partner can sort of help um, I guess sort of provide as well and or go and fetch yeah. <laughs> during a feed. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of snacks, <laughs> um, having your water handy, um, you know, just if they want the remote or the phone and just just having things there. Um, often mums will write down, whether it be on an app or um, on a piece of paper, what side they've fed on last because um, that can sort of... Um, merge into one after you've been doing lots of feeding. So just, yeah, just, I guess, offering um, to, to go and get those things. And, you know, if you see that the glass is empty, going to grab another glass of water without, you know, waiting to be asked and things like that. So are you suggesting that mum should have like a breastfeeding diary, should we say, as to when they fed and what side they were feeding on to be able to help them ensure that the milk, milk supply is, is flowing as well? Yeah, well, look, it's not a necessity, but um, certainly we'll, we find that in the early days, um, because you feed one side and then sort of change the nappy and feed the other <laughs> side, you always start on the side you finish on. So it can be confusing in terms of remembering what side you've fed on. And we do find that mums, I guess, in, in these times are highly organised and tend to, um, you know, either have an app or have a piece of paper where they can write down so they know what side to start on next. And so that can be helpful, especially in those early days. Um, and the other thing some mums like to do as well is just write down, you know, when they had their last wet nappy or, um, you know, when the baby did a poo and things, especially if it's so the midwife can see how, how things are tracking. Okay. So I just wanted to clarify. So the mother will generally start on the side that she finished feeding on. Is that what you said yes, earlier? Yes, correct. And why is yeah. that? So if we were to feed on the same, start on the same side each time, what would happen is we'd have old milk that would sit on that other side. So say, for example, we start on the left side, change the nappy, and then we feed the right side. The baby may not take all of that right side. So once they snuggle down for a sleep and they wake up again, we want them to finish the rest of that right side. If we leave that old milk in there, it can go on to cause things like blocked up and mastitis so it's really important to drain those breasts and get rid of that old milk to prevent any inflammation and then um, infection that can lead to that mastitis. Wonderful wonderful advice thank you for that and you've you've alluded to some apps as well that mums can use is there any that you could maybe recommend? Um, we don't particularly use any, um, I'm trying to think, I don't know the names of any off the top of my head, actually. It, there's so many of them. There's probably about 500. <laughs> but they, um, specifically for breastfeeding, is that right? Yeah. Just, okay. It's like a breastfeeding diary. Um, okay. there is a really good one for mums. Um, we can always Google them. Oh, 
And yeah, we might have to. Sorry. That's okay. Really and I've put you on the it. spot. It's completely okay. Now, I wanted to, <laughs> you mentioned also, of course, and we, we know that mums get very thirsty when breastfeeding. So is this because the, the body's just having to produce more fluids as well? Yeah. So um, it's really important for breastfeeding mums to keep up their fluid intake and to eat a balanced sort of healthy diet. So mm -hmm. We always encourage lots of protein and um, lots of water. They will find they naturally get quite thirsty. Um, you know, some mums can be producing over a litre of milk a day. And so, um, you know, it's a lot. You've got to keep up those, keep up those fluids. Yeah. And how about coffee? Now, there's been some recent studies um, in the last uh, sort of, well, in the last recent while um, with regards to um, caffeine um, when trying to conceive and, and when expecting. But I just wanted to just clarify um, once breastfeeding, how does that affect the baby? Yeah. So um, we say everything in moderation. So it's the same with dairy and things like that. Um, you know, if you were to eat too much of one food group or have too much of one thing, you would probably find there would be side effects from that. So with caffeine, we say moderate intake. I had one mum that I remember had a baby that wasn't sleeping very well. And um, once we got down to the nitty gritty, she was having eight cups of coffee a day. So I wouldn't recommend that. That's why her wow. baby wasn't sleeping. <laughs> um, so, you know, if you're having, you know, a cup or two, I think the the current recommendations are 200 um, micrograms. So a day. So if you're having, you know, just a sensible amount of coffee and not overdoing it, like the eight cups, um, everything in moderation tends to be tends to well. be okay yeah Wonderful. now as common mothers experience a lot of anxiety when breastfeeding how can a partner help curb that anxiety i guess um just lots of reassurance um that she's doing a really good job and just again just helping and being there and being that support person we find that just the presence of a support person not necessarily having to do anything but just being there for <laughs> them um can really help. Sometimes mums who, you know, they have someone who travels a lot or works long hours, they can find it really hard and quite isolating when they're home by themselves. So just really being present is, is a big thing. Um, and as I said before, it is a learned skill. So I guess the key to success for breastfeeding is that motivation and that support. And if they've got the support, usually the motivation just comes with it. As well. And you were mentioning mentioning earlier about partners um, educating themselves. So how can how can partners educate themselves and where should they start? I mean, what's your recommend recommended um, reading list? Should it start with the pamphlets that they're given uh, sort of during the, the, the early classes as well? Yeah, absolutely. So um, everyone in uh, their cities will have access to antenatal classes. Yeah. Um, and so attending an antenatal breastfeeding class is a great option. We also offer free antenatal classes online. And so they're a great way. We do one-on-ones, um, a great way for um, the mums and the partners to be able to uh, I guess know the normal and what to expect with breastfeeding and then they know if things do go wrong um, what those are and um, yeah lots of the hospitals around uh, you know throughout Australia and New Zealand will offer uh, support classes as well so mm -hmm. yeah it's really important to educate yourself especially in that the early day I think if you're just prepared um, things tend to go a lot more smoothly. Definitely. Now, I mean, how would you best describe, I guess, the physical and the psychological barriers that a mother experiences for someone like a father and or a partner that are not physically going through the same thing? Yeah, I guess for some it can be challenging, but um, most times we find that, um, I guess, you know, you're sort of referring more to like the postpartum depression and things like that. Of course, yeah. 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 So, I mean, that, that can be tricky to navigate. Um, but again, I guess it's just coming down to support and then you would have that additional sort of medical. And just being empathetic, being open and empathetic. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and just quickly, I just wanted to, to just mention this, you know, there, there, there's two aspects that men can consider a women's breast intimately, of course, and, and of course, in this context, for the nourishment of the baby. So in yeah. your view, how can a partner best address any of the concerns um, that their partner's breasts, um, that they're, they're not pleasure toys, rather that they're actually there from an evolutionary and a biological purpose? Because, I mean, this yeah. can sort of course, in some relationships, not all, but in some relationships, a little bit of sort of... Um, 
I don't know, what would you say? Anxiety and trouble and or, you know, sort of, sort of, you know, stresses, I guess, within the relationship. Yeah, so in terms of that, I guess it's just um, being patient with her um, in terms of, um, and just remembering um, that she's been through a pregnancy, but then also a delivery, whether that be vaginal or C-section. And, um, you know, there has been changes that have occurred to her body. So um, perhaps maybe that she's not feeling as confident, you know, things have changed physically um, for her. And so just being really patient, reassuring, and I guess just really positive that, um, you know, she still looks great and um, that, you know, I guess it's amazing what female bodies can do, isn't oh, it? Re and really unbelievable. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and you are mentioning earlier, of course, that f first six to eight week period is um, a very challenging time with sleep deprivation and the amount of feeds, etc. But of course, at the same time, f friends and family want to come around to start, you know, bonding with the baby and starting that their own communication relationship um, and just to sort of, of course, celebrate the arrival. So yes. with that, how can partners be a breastfeeding advocate and voice, I guess, their support to friends and family to support the mother during that time? Yeah, so that can be quite tricky. I mean, we always sort of encourage um, just shorter visits. And, you know, if, if the mother's particularly private about um, breastfeeding, some mums won't like to breastfeed in front of other people, um, or they might feel uncomfortable, especially if they're having challenges in the early days. So um, it may be that you try and coordinate um, the visitors to come at a time that you're not feeding or they've just had a feed and then they can come over um, or just keeping those visits to a short time um, or making the mum feel comfortable that if she does need to leave the room or um, feel like she wants to feed in private, that that's okay as well. Mm -hmm. And with, um, I guess, more public feeds as well, once I guess the mother um, and, and the baby and as a family, of course, that they sort of head out, why is it important to encourage um, partners to feed in public? This is a, a big topic of discussion for, for such a long time, isn't it, in the media as oh, well, breastfeeding is. in public. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's just trying to normalise the breastfeeding, isn't it? I mean, yep. in this day and age, there shouldn't be an issue with breastfeeding in public, but for some small group settings to be um, issues that arise. I mean, you often see in the media, um, someone's been asked to leave a cafe because they've been breastfeeding. And I guess it's just encouraging the mum to feel confident in what she's doing and that there is nothing wrong with feeding in public and it is normal and um, for that support person if there was anything to be said you know to stand up for her rights as well. Absolutely and there are maternity um, sort of clothing wear and active wear brands like Kate and Shay, as you mentioned at the start, that are medically yes. endorsed um, nursing bras and tops and clothing that can help with this sort of stuff as well, definitely with um, feeding in public and making it a lot more comfortable for the mum. So, um, you know, in your view, how is choosing the right clothing brand like with Kate and Shay, um, sort of helpful, I guess, with supporting breastfeeding in public? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really important that I guess mums feel feel nice when they're out um, after they've had babies as well. And Kate and Shay's got a beautiful range of um, active wear. Um, I actually endorse their bras. Um, they're, they're fantastic for um, really comfortable, but also fantastic for helping to reduce that mastitis and things because they're so well fitting and so well supported. So um, I guess having a really good range of um, nursing wear is important because if you are out, you can be quite covered up while you're feeding. So if you do feel uncomfortable, um, you know, you can just have tops that have wee zips down and they are quite discreet. So that can make mums feel a lot more comfortable when they're out and about and feeding. And so how can a nursing bra help stop mastitis then? How does that work? Yeah, so um, what can happen with mastitis is it's when, um, or block ducts especially, is when um, a bra is too tight or it doesn't fit well, it can cut off um, the milk ducts. And so when we talked about before um, about not removing that old milk, what can happen is if a bra is ill-fitting, it can cut into those ducts and actually block uh -huh. them. And so if that old milk sits in there and doesn't drain, um, that can go on to cause inflammation and infection. So the Caden Shea bras especially are designed um, that they are really well-fitted and really well-supported, which does does really help with 
um, reducing those risks as well. Awesome. So for anyone watching and listening, could you just maybe clarify who and what is Kate and Shea again? Yeah, so Kate and Shea is a brand of nursing and um, maternity active wear. And it's um, basically its ethos is um, it, around every mum looks uh, needs to look and um, feel their best. And so they've designed this range of um, maternity and active wear to support mums, breastfeeding mums, um, feel great while they're, um, while they're wearing it. Fantastic. Now, getting back to breastfeeding and it taking up a lot of time, housework is one topic that can cause much undue stress in relationships during the early stages of a newborn's life, as many of us know. So how much stress can it alleviate if the partner actively participates in housework during these early stages and, of course, beyond as well? Oh, personally, so much. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've got three wee ones and so I just know, I mean, just not even being asked to pick up the vacuum cleaner or going to do jobs, it just takes that pressure off. I mean, I think females in particular just, you know, sometimes your mental health can be directly linked to, um, you know, the state of the house around you and just being in a clean house where there's jobs being done um it it really can help and someone actually once said to me a great idea is to pop a list on your fridge um so that if visitors do come around um or you know if your partner is looking for things to do you can just tick those things off so it might just be mop the floors or um, empty the dishwasher and um just not having to ask sometimes is really nice um as well Definitely. Yeah. And, and this, this of course, sort of goes beyond not just, you know, this, the first sort of six to eight week period as well. But Absolutely. You know. <laughs> and not just when you have small children. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just the harmony in itself yeah. in a relationship when, they, you know, both, both parties are actively sort of <laughs> participating in housework definitely can help reduce stress <laughs> and increase <Absolutely. laughs> just happiness overall. But, you know, after sort of that initial six to eight week, um, period mothers um, also can choose to, to express breast milk which will enable partners to actively bottle feed the baby as well so how can partners best get involved here then yeah so um, when we talk about expressing we try and get mums to make sure they've really got breastfeeding established before they start expressing and what we mean by established is that um, usually around that four to six week mark where baby's gaining weight well, um, they've got good milk supply and things are kind of settled into a bit of a, a good groove. Um, now, once that's happened, if mum does want to express, uh, the best time for her to do that is first thing in the morning when she's got the most amount of milk. And she would be able to express and then pop that milk into um, the fridge or the freezer and then dad would be able to ex- um, give that expressed um, bottle of milk. Mm -hmm. And so how can dads then find out how many millimetres and ounces the baby needs at, of course, various stages as well? Yeah, so the the formula that we use is 150 mils per kilo per day. So depending on the baby's weight, um, and then we divide that by the amount of feeds per day. So it may be that the dads need the midwives to work that out for them. (laughs) So can you just say that again? So it's 150 millilitres. Yep, per kilo per day, mm-hmm. and then divide that by the amount of um, feeds per day. So, okay, yeah, right. that's so how we work it. Out. Wonderful. And so, I mean, I mean, feeding a baby is a very special experience and a great time, I guess, for the, for the father and or the partner to bond more with the baby. So this is something that I guess that they would sort of jump at the chance of doing once they have the opportunity. Um, yes. But, Then again, of course, as the protector and the warrior of the home, no doubt that this time can take its toll both physically and mentally on the partner as well. So, you know, the baby is a huge adjustment, not just for the dad, but for the mum and the household overall, of course, you know, if if there's other children um, as well. So, you know, why is it so important that the, the partner and of course, everyone else in the household equally look after themselves also? Yes. Well, I guess, um, it can be it can be quite full on, I guess those you know the early days and just having um, having the baby and oh god now I've lost my train of thought. 
That's okay. Can you repeat that again? Sorry. Yeah, that, that's okay. Okay. So, um, so the baby is a huge adjustment, not just for the mum, but for the dad also. And why is it so important that they ensure that they look after themselves also? Yes, yeah, so I think um, having a baby does put quite a lot of strain on the mum, especially physically but and emotionally. And so it's really important for the dad to, um, you know, obviously um, look after themselves, but also try and um, help with help with the mum. I guess if the mum's trying to, um, you know, take on too much, it can be really overwhelming. And so um, it's really important that um, they can sort of, do what they need to do and then try and offer support rather than the mum having to support support them. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you, I guess, for sharing your top 10 things a partners can do um, positively to help the mother of their child adjust to breastfeeding. If you were to summarise, I guess, your key messages for anyone watching and listening, how would you best do that? Yeah, so I think um, breastfeeding happens more easily when uh, the mum has someone or has a support person um, around them who can um, really motivate them and support them. And I think that's crucial to a really successful breastfeeding journey for the mum. So, um, And the studies have shown that also, haven't they? The studies have really shown. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and I think just working as a team, like, um, you know, being on board and doing it together, it makes it more enjoyable and, you know, support each other through it, motivate each other, um, learn about those benefits of breastfeeding, how it works, how you can um, best support her and then um, where to get help if you need to get help. Um, sometimes if the mums are in it, it can be really emotional and they're sleep deprived. And so knowing when to call in the experts, knowing when to get a lactation consultant or to call the midwife or to see the GP can, can be really beneficial. And um, yeah, just lots of practical ways to support, to support them, you know, chores around the house, um, you know, doing those bath times, changing the nappies bringing the water, bringing some snacks, all those sorts of things. It just makes a world of difference. Mm -hmm. And you were just mentioning knowing when is the right time to, of course, bring in uh, external support, being from lactation consultants like yourself, um, speaking to maternal child health nurses, um, GPs. And of course, there's a whole range of different um, breastfeeding organisations as well. So is there any that you would like to recommend in particular? Um, well, I can recommend my services. <laughs> Do yes. you mean outside of mine? <laughs> yes, as, as well. But yeah, of course, you, yours and the Australian Breastfeeding Association. Um, and there's a number of um, sort of other um, organisations as well. So I just wanted to ask, what, like, what are your recommendations? Yeah, so in Australia, I definitely recommend the Australian Breastfeeding Association. They've got great information on their website. Yep. Um, New Zealand, we tend to follow um, Health Info is a really good one for mums. Um, and there's also another one that's quite good, Raising Children in Australia, that does have some good information on there as well. Um, in terms of just solely breastfeeding, we do have quite a lot of uh, information on our website, which is more than milk, uh, .co.nz, and as I said, there's access to free free services on there as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Julia. If anyone's got any other questions and or would like to reach out to you um, following this today, whereabouts can they find you? Uh, yeah, so they can find us on Instagram at More Than Milk NZ or Facebook. And also um, our website is morethanmilk.co.nz. Wonderful. Well, you take care. Thanks again for your time and look forward to speaking with you again in the not too distant future. Until then, take Thank care. Thank you so much for having me. You're more than welcome. Take care. All right, bye. Thanks.